Well, we're back again, back on the air, and I'm back from my trip uh, from the wedding I went to. And we have uh, another podcast for you this, uh, today, uh, Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. And today, the title of our study is going to be Sacrifices Pleasing to God, and it's the last chapter. We'll also look at the benediction and also the uh, the the final greeting. With that said, uh, let's just move on. And I got a I got a little story I'd like to tell you, uh, and I'll tell you it in a moment. Well, just to let you know, uh, I'm back from uh, my trip. The uh, the wedding was really nice. Uh, it was a beautiful wedding. I got to share something with you, though, about the wedding. Uh, the wedding was outside, outdoors, and uh, it was rain in the forecast, and uh, it rained. Uh, I mean, it was raining uh, all around us. But uh, I kept checking the uh, while we were sitting outdoors, and we were quite a ways from any buildings or anything because they had to uh, drive us down to where the ceremony was, and uh, it would have taken a while to get back to shelter. But I noticed some people had umbrellas and stuff. But I had checked my cell phone, and uh, I noticed that. Uh, the rain was coming right at us, and uh, I figured, well, we're going to probably get wet. <laughs> well, it just, for some reason, I just, I prayed silently. I just said, Lord, uh, don't uh, don't let it rain on the wedding. Uh, you know, it probably would have not wrecked the wedding, but it would have caused some problems. Uh and I looked at the cell phone again, and it seemed like the 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 rain that was coming down towards us kind of opened up, and it was like there was a channel right in between where we were at because it gives you that dot where you're located. And we sat there for the whole ceremonies, and afterwards we took pictures, and so we were down there a long time. Never rained. <laughs> It was kind of like the Lord party in the Red Sea, and I was I was really blessed by that, and uh, so I just thought I'd share that with you. Well, we're finishing up on our our last lesson. Uh, we're in chapter thirteen of the book of Hebrews, and uh, we're gonna look at the benediction and also the the final greeting uh by the author and then i'll give you kind of my take on who i think the author is and with that said uh we'll uh play the uh the scripture we'll go through the scripture first and then i'll uh share my notes with you and end the closing and that'll end our lesson uh and we've gone through the the book of hebrews together and i hope you enjoyed it with that, I'm just going to stop the recording here and uh, uh, go into the scripture. Chapter 13 Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have, for He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. Pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. I urge you the more earnestly to do this in order that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I appeal to you, brothers, bear with my word of exhortation. For I have written to you briefly. You should know that our brother Timothy has been released, with whom I shall see you if he comes soon. Greet all your leaders and all the saints. Those who come from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with all of you. Sacrifices Pleasing to God in this last chapter of the book of Hebrews, I will include benediction and final greetings to complete the study. Have you ever been kind and hospitable to a stranger? Maybe unaware you were entertaining an angel, this tells us that angels can and do appear as mere men. Everything in the life of a Christian, a faithful follower of Christ, should be motivated by love, so the author of this book concludes by encouraging us to follow brotherly love and hospitality. Also, we are to remember those in prison. I believe he is talking about those that are there because of their faith in Christ. With that said, I also think that if we have an opportunity to reach those in prison or jails with the gospel, we should. At one time, doors were open to me to go in and preach the gospel, which I did, but after a while, that door shut to me. God opens doors, and he also closes them. We now come to marriage, a very touching subject for some. Even in my own family, I have some living common law marriages. In my thoughts, I believe this to be wrong, and it defiles the marriage bed. In the Bible, it is forbidden, and if you are a Christian practicing this, you should rethink what you are doing, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. To crave to be wealthy is also wrong. We should not let money be a driving force in our lives. We are to be free of the love of money and be content with what we have. Suppose God allows you to become wealthy and then use your wealth for Him by helping others. God will show you the way to use your wealth for His glory. Whatever your lot in life, you can be sure, God will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear, what can man do to me? Returning to the one who brought you to the saving knowledge of Christ, remember them, consider the outcome of their way of life, and imitate their faith. Then remember Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. In this life, we will come across diverse and strange teaching. We must be on guard and test every spirit to ensure it is true to God's Word. Stay in the Word and be strengthened by grace. Feed the soul with spiritual food, God will provide the food for the body. 
Worrying about food for the body and negating spiritual food will not benefit us. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat, this is saying that the right found in the Old Testament is not for us, it was just a foreshadowing of what we have in Jesus. The high priest brings the animals whose blood is brought into the holy place as a sacrifice for are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate to sanctify the people through his blood. He left heaven, the proper holy place which was pictured by the holy place in the tabernacle. Going outside the camp was a type of him going outside heaven to bear the reproach and endure the cross for us. There is no lasting home for him or us in this sin-filled world, we seek the heavenly city to come. The sacrifices that are pleasing to God are these. They are the ones offered up through him continually. The sacrifice of praise to God is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge his name. Being an elder for many years, I take this verse very seriously. We are not to neglect to do good and share what we have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God, all this is true sacrifice. Then we are to obey our leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over our souls, as those who will have to give an account. We now have some hints about the author. I have not said who he might be, but will tell you who I think it is. My thoughts are leaning toward it being Paul. He was an apostle to the Gentile, so writhing Hebrews, he keeps his name out as being the author. In other epistles, Paul asked for prayer and had a desire to come to visit the saints where he was writing. When he made the statement, be restored to you the sooner, it is possible he was writing from prison. We find another hint about his authorship in the final greeting. Benediction From the benediction, we see that God the Father brought the Lord Jesus back from the dead and that Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, and he will equip us with everything good that we may do his will, working in us by the Holy Spirit that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Final Greetings In this closing, the author, whoever he is, appeals to us to bear with his words of exhortation. Even though it took us many lessons to go through this epistle, he said, it was brief. Now we come to another hint that Paul might be writing this epistle. We read you should know that our brother Timothy has been released. I did some searching online and found this answer to the question, was Timothy in prison with Paul at Rome? Philippians 1 verse 1 suggests that Timothy was with Paul as Paul was writing his letter to the Philippian church. Some scholars suggest this letter was written in Rome, but logistically it more plausible that Paul was imprisoned in Caesarea when Philippians was written. This conclusion is drawn from the fact that Paul mentions help being sent from Ephesus, a few days' journey from Caesarea, but a very long journey from Rome. It is not clear if Timothy was visiting Paul in Caesarea or if he was a fellow prisoner. Timothy is also later believed to have been with Paul during Paul's trial in Rome. In the benediction in Hebrews, the author indicates that Timothy was recently freed from an unknown imprisonment and the author is hopeful Timothy will be joining him shortly. Catholic scholars attribute the benediction in Hebrews as authentic Paul, suggesting Timothy was imprisoned elsewhere while Paul was awaiting trial and was subsequently released. It is likely that Timothy arrived in Rome around the time of Paul's trial and was likely with Paul either as a caregiver and fellow co-worker, Roman prisons did not provide inmates food, or that Timothy himself was imprisoned upon his arrival. Thirty years after Paul's death, Timothy is imprisoned, this time in Ephesus, where he is executed for his rebuke of a pagan festival honoring the goddess Diana. Then, at the very end of this epistle, in the final greeting to the leaders and all the saints, he comments on those who come from Italy sending their greetings, which sounds like Paul, who might have been in Rome at the time of this writing. Then he closes with, Grace, be with all of you. Well, this ends our study in the book of Hebrews, and it ends this last lesson. And in closing again, I'd like to just uh, remind you, uh, even though we're done uh, studying the book of Hebrews, you can go back through the book. You can uh, probably find a lot more that we didn't even talk about in this book. In fact, that's the way the Word of God is. It's just it goes on and on and on. And just finding all them jewels. You could do all that mining by yourself. Well, 
in our closing, just remember God is out here. You can find out all about him in your Bible. And with that, I'm just going to close and have a great day. And just keep studying the word of God. Bye for now.